a while ago, I was asked to write a poem about one of my idols, and I was like, fuck that. And then uh, they were like, money? And I was like, fuck. <laughs> uh, so I wrote this poem, and, uh, and the funny part about it is it's one of those poems that I was like so upset about uh, that I ended up like weaving in all the things that I appreciated about this person's life. So uh, this is that shit. I do this sometimes. I notice that I do that because some of my students told me that I do this, and then we all took pictures doing this. So if you see me doing that at all, it's just what I do. Uh, I don't know why. I'm not sorry for it. Go fuck yourself. All right, let's go. Here's, is anybody offended by me saying go fuck yourself? Because I no. okay, cool, good. I'm in the right place. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> So I've had this dream about this Twilight Zone episode I saw where this man wakes up from a coma in the middle of Memphis around March and realizes immediately why he was there. The man makes it to the Mason Temple and gets arrested out of rat screaming, they're gonna kill you, Mark! They're gonna kill you! Stand on the tap! Stand on the tap! As irrelevant as it must have seemed, it still didn't matter. The temple was packed full of King's voice like Samson's palms in my head. I see him fall like a sunflower being picked. It had to be his cheek. It had to be the diaspora of his jaw and the families of teeth tied to his chin and led astray by every platelet river oozing out of his throat. It had to be his spine. It had to slide in between the meat of his backbone like a jet. Whenever I see a multiracial couple anywhere in the world, any older than my father on a bus holding hands, I can't help but feel as though the battle has already been won. I feel like a heat lamp in a lighthouse. Can't say I feel the same way about all white rappers or black police officers, but the fact that they exist, I can't help but love. Sit down, Mark. Sit down, let me tell you something. We have a lot riding on this. We've smushed too many bodies in between shoulders of Montgomery storefronts to let you call these Negroes people. We call them cement. Watch us build our city over your toes. All we need is paper. All we need is water. And we have the ocean filled with chain letters we never let your nigger ancestors read. And you call yourselves people. What's so good about being people, Martin? We have tanks in front of your house. We have more bricks than you have windows. We have more rope than you have seeds. What's so good about being people, Martin? Read a speech now. <laughs> Read a speech now, Martin. Read a speech now like anybody I'd like to live alone like. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now because I'm here to do God's will. And he showed me the mountaintop, and I've looked over. I've looked over. I've looked up for work. I walk up and down these hills I've mistaken for mountains and see we step foot on San Francisco soil. Working in Bayview, you tend to think of Third Street as an undertaker's dream. The housing projects and autopsies nightmare are one big unsolved case. We offer them food, offer them a chance to leave the barracks. They box, hold themselves in at night because it's only a matter of time before they feel like a teddy bear. Lying on a corner, swallowed in candlelight vigils and left like bullet casings, Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested 30 times before he was 35 years old. Like so many teddy bears, lying on a corner, Swallowed in candlelight vigils and left like bullet casing. Sit down, Martin! Sit down! Stand on the tower! Stand on the tower! Let me ask you a question. If you had the chance to take one bullet for a mountain full of dreams, would you hide? Or would you look over?